in their energy to make good things happen in Blackburn. It wouldn't be great if we could get a group of people together and watch this and then hear from some of those folks in town that are doing some of those cool things. So that's what we've got here today. We've got a panel that uh, I'm going to introduce. I'm going to ask each of them to share a little bit about uh, what they do, what kind of project they might have been involved in, uh, or how they connect to what we just watched here, whether they were inspired by it or had an idea that's kind of built off of it or anything like that, just to, just to start a conversation. So with us today, we have Lindsay West, who is the founding chair of the Lyric Council. You Yay. all recognize <laughs> Tower Blackford and from Virginia Tech, who uh, probably bit his tongue a little bit when he saw them painting the crosswalks out there on the street, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure he appreciated the thought behind it. <laughs> we also have uh, Beth Logan here today from the New River Valley uh, Bike Association, and then finally we've got a few folks from the Blacksburg Children's Museum, Janine Canola and Paula Bolte. So I ask our panel to come up, take a seat, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then this is all about sharing ideas, so I ask you all to engage, ask some questions, let's get some conversation going. And uh, again, I appreciate you coming. Enjoy the discussion. Yeah. 
was closed for several years, um, used as tech classes for a couple of years, and a couple of folks were downtown Blacksburg uh, Democratic headquarters. Uh, the downtown merchants of Blacksburg and the town had long wanted to have recognized that this was a real linchpin for downtown Blacksburg. In the spring of 1994, a group from downtown merchants started talking about how could we possibly open the theater to do. A bunch of us got together and started working on it, and we literally jumped off the edge in terms of whether this was even going to be possible. It was a volunteer effort, totally, with no money. We had, some, we had dedicated staff from the town, um, a photographer, an attorney, an architect, designer with theory experience, financial planning, uh, and on and on, who all volunteered their time to be a part of this. The tech president and his wife hosted an event and gave us some real standing and, and visibility. And we started identifying our, our audience, uh, the special niche that the lyric has to this community. We organized as a, as a private nonprofit with tax exempt status and for two years we worked just trying to get ourselves organized and put together. And in 1996 we cleaned up the theater somewhat and found many of these treasures that were underneath all of the gold curtains that surrounded the space. And we opened and ran uh, weekend movies for a couple of years. We knew that unless we could get people into the theater, it would be very difficult to raise money just in the abstract for it. But we had this building that we could start losing. So we did that, and by March of 1998, we closed the theater again and started the restoration. Um, there were some key people that we had on, on the board in terms of architecture and design. And then Bob Pack, the, the local contractor, was between jobs, and he said, I will be your contractor pro bono. And we paid all of his his workers and all of his subcontractors, but Bob contributed all of his services. To the extent that I came down here one night at 10 o'clock to check on things, and Bob Pack and his friend Dennis Dowdy were up on a ladder with his Bob's, with Barbara's vacuum cleaner, vacuuming his hands. <laughs> That was the kind of way that we got this job done. We were fortunate that the town was a real ally in all of this. Not only did they dedicate staff, but they opened doors for us. And whenever we had a problem, I would go and see the then town manager, uh, Ron Seacrest. And Ron says, oh, I think I can take care of that for you. So um, that was what really made all the difference in doing it. Um, we had a certain number of keys to success that I was just going to remind people of. The lyric has a special niche and caught the imagination of the public. Uh, we identified and targeted supporters as donors and our audiences. And we had a large and varied group of volunteers with a range of skills. We had donated services for fundraising graphics, finances, and budgeting design, and then other skills. It was a tangible capital project with ways to recognize donors who seat plaques and a large lot of plaque. Um, it's a lot easier to raise money for a tangible capital project than just for an office. People want to see something happen. Uh, we had a clear mess mission and a message with consistent and instantly recognizable graphics. And we had a small core of committed people who put together all the pieces kept the project moving. Um, there were probably six to twelve of us who were real slave drivers in this project, who refused to sort of let go and uh, put, put into it. And then when we finished, and as we went along, we had a, public, a publicized, demonstrated record um, of achievement. One of the early documents that we wrote um, is still pertinent to what's going on now. The reopening and restoration of the Lyric Theater is an investment by the community in its future and is a key element in the economic health of downtown Blacksburg and of the area. The Lyric Council remains committed to operating the theater on sound business principle and practices and to providing a community facility to enrich the lives of local citizens. And 
And I think that statement has really continued to be the philosophy of the lyric. And with the current board and our current director, Susan Manning, has really fulfilled the, the goals that many of us had in mind when we started this. So I hope some other projects can put together the same kind of thing. success 
I had to travel for work the week before, so I really missed out on the pulling of everything together and actually setting it up. And I showed up Saturday morning at 9 a.m. when our event was going to start at 11-ish on the, on the heels of wagons and wheels, and I just broke down in tears because there was a children's museum in Blackburn. It was, it was just amazing. Um, I have been dreaming of this for about three years, and I, I'll backtrack a little. My husband and I, who's in the audience, David Kiola, we moved here eight years ago, and he started his Ph.D. program at Tech, intending to be here for three or four years. And we fell in love with Blacksburg. And we moved here with a one-year-old. We now have a nine-year-old and an almost seven-year-old. And obviously, there's just not a lot to do with children. We spent, and when he was in school especially, I spent pretty much every weekend at the library and just at the parks and fell in love with what Blacksburg already is and met some moms through our children and through daycare and said, wouldn't it be great if we had a children's museum in Blacksburg? It's the perfect community with all of the resources with the universities close by, the amazing technical um, people that are here, and just the, uh, it's, it's just such a wonderful place for education to, to grow and for all of our children to have this experience. Um, we moved from New Hampshire, so of course we are close in New England to Boston and museums that are nearby in that close New England proximity. And like many families,